So, in this segment, uh, what I want to look at is kind of spiritual interventions. And then, after spending a little time on that, I'm going to recap some of the major points that I've tried to make over the course of my segments. And I'm sure Jen will uh, have done that with her segments also. So, one of the spiritual interventions that is a very important intervention is prayer. So, of course, praying for our clients is what most of us do, um, but often that prayer is outside of counseling. If I pray for my clients, if, I, if both of these clients are Christians, uh, if both these partners are Christians, and they want prayer explicitly, well, of course, you know, I feel comfortable praying with the, uh, with the partners. Uh, some people do not. It's okay. You know, you do what you feel comfortable with and what your couple feels comfortable with, with both people involved. So, praying for your couples is one thing. Praying with your couples is a, another thing where you may have a time where all of you pray. But one of the things that is, I think, one of the most uh, astounding findings in the last probably 10 to 15 years of research in couple therapy is a finding by uh, Frank Fincham and Steve Beach. Frank Fincham is at Florida State University, Steve Beach is at University of Georgia. And they have worked uh, just a very systematic research program in the effect that couples praying for each other has on their relationship. Now, it's very important how the partners pray for each other. So they, they need to pray for each other in a way that builds the other person up, that prays for the well-being of the other person, and not a way that kind of is to get God on my side and you know, oh Lord, I pray for this person to stop drinking, you know, where I'm trying to use God to, you know, correct this person. So no, you know, to be really effective, the, the persons, the, the partners need to really be praying for each other's well-being. This has been an amazing systematic study over a period of many years that Fincham and Beach have done. They have shown that this produces changes in people's attitudes toward each other, in their satisfaction with their relationship, in their brain activity, in the chemistry in their bodies, in their behavior. This will actually really transform relationships really important that they pray for the well-being of the partner. Now, there are other types of spiritual interventions that you can use, and uh, you want to be careful in all of these that both partners agree that this, these are appropriate. So, some people will use a kind of a Christian meditation. So, they will give scriptures for people to meditate on uh, during the course of the week or talk about. Uh, they might even have a, a kind of a Lexio Divina where the, you read a scripture and the partners you know, might respond what they're getting out of the scripture. Uh, so there, there are many types of spiritual interventions that you can integrate in your therapy, but from an ethical standpoint, the most important part is that partners agree, both partners agree, that these are appropriate. So, let me try to just re, uh, recap a couple of the main points that I've tried to make in the number of segments that I've done. The first of these, since we've just talked about spiritual interventions, the, the first of these is like, remember why the couple came to you. They came to you for help with their relationship. They probably did not come to you 
for spiritual advice and spiritual direction, unless you might happen to be uh, trained as a pastoral counselor. But you got to keep your priorities clear to be ethically involved with these couples. And the clear priority is you have a, an implicit or explicit contract with them to work on their relationship. And that's number one. And the spiritual is extra added attraction. So. Second, remember that God is at work in people's relationships. That, that takes a great burden off. I don't have to do it all. You know, God is, is going to bring about God's ways uh, in a relationship. So I need to be uh, open to God's intervention. I need to be flexible. I need to be attentive to the Spirit's work in me and helping me discern what's going on. And, uh, and we need to, to work on this as, you know, God working in the relationship. Also, I don't have to do it all because there are many resources that I can use. There are perhaps people that these people can connect with that are in their church or in their life, in their community, that can provide lay support and lay help. There are pastors that are uh, very good at providing spiritual uh, help uh, for couples. So, you know, I, I want to help them engage the people in their life that can help them the most so that they have put together, they've, they've put together a team of folks that they trust that can help them. Also, both people, remember, we've just made this point repeatedly, both people need to be willing to engage in the interventions. So your job is often to help two people with really different agendas from each other to get on the same page and be able to cooperate so that they can maybe move closer together. Uh, this includes working on forgiveness, it includes working on uh, uh, spiritual interventions, it includes uh, all kinds of uh, things that they might differ on and you're going to work with them to work together. This is, of course, what we all know. When in doubt, consult. <laughs> this is the ethical responsibility we have. We have lots of things we can consult. We can consult resources, but we can consult supervisors. We can consult peer supervisors or just colleagues that, that we work with and, and want to be able to share uh, and get their opinions. We consult in prayer, we consult with God, uh, and so when in doubt, consult. Take care of yourself. If we are too stressed out uh, because our caseload is too big or uh, somehow other things are going, you know, haywire in our life, we're not effective counselors, so we want to take care of ourselves and recognize if we are in some way impaired and can't really help a couple. Maybe this couple has similar issues to issues that we might be having and so we're kind of proving our own solutions. Don't want to get in that situation. We know these things. This is what our ethical responsibilities are so I'm just reminding us of what we all know. And then in case I didn't mention it uh, when in doubt, consult. So, of course, this is our fallback. You know, we don't have to solve everyone's problems. We have a lot of people in our life that can be our supportive community. And so we need to be willing to draw on that supportive community uh, professionally and personally and also spiritually. Well, I've enjoyed uh, my chance to talk with you about things that I think are important in couple counseling, and I hope you benefit by this series of, of uh, talks.